Hey everyone, it's Brandon with Electric Marketing, and today I'm going to show you how to utilize Lifetimely, specifically focusing on retention, and what are some of the key metrics that you're gonna to wanna to be able to report on. So first and foremost, you're gonna access it via your Shopify apps. So you can just download it, all of your data will sync, and you will go into Lifetimely here. So within integrations, you're going to plug in all of your uh, Google Ads, Facebook Ads, Microsoft, TikTok, Snap, Google Analytics, Recharge, and if you use ShipStation, ShipStation as well. Then you're also going to set up your costs and expenses. So your product costs you can bring in from Shopify. You can also set up a default gross margin if you want. You can put in transaction costs. So typically, since we use Shopify payments, we just have the Shopify payments pricing come in. We'll also have handling costs in here. So if the fulfillment center charges us $5 per order or three cents per item, whatever it is, we can add those in there. We can also add in shipping costs. So like we can use Shopify shipping or we can charge the, or we can add in the amount actually charged at checkout as a shipping charge, or we can manually add rates. And then we can also do custom costs as well too, if we wanna associate a custom cost with a particular order. Why are we adding in all of these ad integrations as well as the costs and expenses for products and shipping is because we wanna be able to utilize this to get to our gross margin, uh, item, other metrics such as like lifetime value and having all of the data in here is gonna allow us to sort of slice and dice it and get an accurate summary of what our profit and loss is. Once this entire setup process is over, we're gonna to wanna to report on a couple of key metrics. One is lifetime to value uh, CAC ratio. So lifetime value is the lifetime value of a customer with a brand. So let's say I purchased from an e-commerce website for $50 for my first order. And then I come back and make a second order for $50. And then I come back for a third order, which is $25. So the lifetime value of me as a customer to that brand is going to be $50 plus $50 plus $25 to give you $125 lifetime value. CAC is customer acquisition cost. So that's the dollar amount it costs to acquire a customer. This, let's say it's $30 and I'm not good enough in math actually. Let's say the CAC is $40. So it costs $40 to do to acquire the customer. And the lifetime value is 120. That means your LTV to CAC ratio is a three. And that's ideally the benchmark that we're shooting for. When you're scaling very quickly, it might be a little bit lower because you don't have enough historical data to see what the lifetime value is going to be. But the benchmark should be a three lifetime value to CAC ratio. And then your CAC payback period. This is how long it takes you to pay back your CAC. If you're making more money on the first order than your customer acquisition cost, your CAC payback period is going to be zero, which is awesome. The most we want it to be is three months. So three months is really the maximum that we wanna take any of our direct to consumer brands. Other important metrics are 90 day lifetime value and one year lifetime value. So we'll plug those in and pull those out of Lifetimely. Another one is the 90 day repeat purchase rate. So within 90 days, how many, what percentage of your customers are reordering? And these are first time customers. So any first time customer, what percentage is going to make a repeat purchase in the next 90 days? And then other key metrics to look at is just number of return customers and number of new customers for that particular month, just to have a benchmark. And something we like to do is to look at how much revenue is coming from our returning customers versus our net new customers. Another thing that we'll like to hone in on is what is the average reorder time frame? So it's one thing to note the 90 day repeat purchase rate, but like on average, how long is it taking it for customers to reorder? And then we can hone in on, okay, 50% of repurchases happen between days 25 and 34 or between days 29 and 30. And then that allows us to then say, okay, in our Clavio email flows, maybe the replenishment flow needs to go out at day 25. And if they haven't reordered by day 34, we're hitting them with a win back flow because we know that 46% of those purchases are gonna happen within then. And you will see a diminishing point of returns where only a small percentage of reorders are happening past a certain time frame. So having this data allows us to better inform our marketing efforts as well. 
So let's dive into how to actually get to some of these metrics in life timely. So first is your profit and loss. This is gonna give you an income statement of your business. So let's go ahead and look at January. So here you can see total sales, marketing costs, COGS, and your net profit. Then we can break it down a little bit more. So in order to get new customers and repeat customers, you are quite simply just looking at new customers, pull the number, repeat customers, pull the number. And then you can also see the sales breakdown. So 500,000 versus a little bit over 1.3 million, as well as the percentage of repeat sales for your particular store. So we take those and plug it into return in new customers here. Now, your CAC, you're gonna get here. So your blended CAC during January was $148. We know that the lifetime value is about $201, the one year LTV. So what we'll do is we'll take that 148 and that 201, and we'll just simply do 201 divided by 148. That gives us a 1.36, which is a little bit lower than we'd like to be, but is a good benchmark for us moving forward. Then that CAC payback period that is pulled out by looking at the lifetime value of a customer. So you'll click on the lifetime value report on the left-hand side here. And then these filters up top are going to allow you to look at different metrics. So if I want to say the Accumulated sales per customer divided by CAC. This will give you that CAC payback window. So you can see here, one point oh four. So this cohort had an accumulated sales per customer CAC ratio of one point oh four two months later. So that means after two months, we were above the cost to acquire that customer in terms of sales. And then here you can see the CAC payback period. And this is just based off of, you hover over this, is the accumulated sales margin. So not just the actual revenue from the customer, but the accumulated sales margin. So that's at about 5.8 months. Now, typically what we do is we set a benchmark for what is the data that we're gonna be utilizing. So for this, it's always the 2021 to date customer cohort, but it's important that you keep that consistent across the board. So that's how you get your LTV to CAC ratio and your CAC payback period. The one day LTV and the, or sorry, the 90 day LTV and the one year LTV. So let's go ahead and look at this section right here. You simply just pull these numbers. So the average three month is 139. The average 12 month is 201 and just drop those in there. Now, um, the other thing we're gonna wanna pull is the repurchase rate. So within 90 days, 26.9% of customers are reordering. And we go ahead and drop that in here as well. In order to get to this 46% of repurchases happens day 25 to 34, you're gonna go into your time between orders tab here. And you wanna see first to second order, granularity, five days, and then you'll get the cumulative percentage of repeat orders. So we can see 23% of purchases are occurring 25 to 29 days after the customer's previous purchase, and 12% are within days 30 to 34. Now the cumulative total is interesting here because you can see how there's a massive jump between that 24th day and the 34th day, where basically 35% of the reorders are happening within that window. And we can even get more granular with this. So let's say we want to take a look at only customers who do not have a subscription, because obviously the reordering 
behavior is going to be different for those who are on a subscription. So let's take a look at only one shots. And you can see here that the average time between orders is pretty significantly higher. Now, if we were to go back here and apply filters with nothing, you can see here it's 43 days. So it's actually only a two day difference, but that's just one sort of interesting caveat to take out of that. Now you basically have your life cycle and retention overall snapshot for working with your brand. There are a bunch of other things that you can dive into within Lifetimely to start to extract more data and to get a more robust retention strategy. But I'm going to put that together in a separate video that I'll link below in the comments. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. As always, you can leave a comment below and I'll get back to you or feel free to reach out to us at electricmarketing.com. That's electric with a Q at the end instead of a C.